Hey, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I do hope you lot are all doing well today. I really do hope that. And welcome back to Chelsea News, the series where I go across football news, media, transfer news, just updates, stuff like that, give you the lowdown, give you my opinion, and then more importantly, ask for yours. And really, to be honest, there's two things I want to talk about in today's video. One being a very exciting piece of news in the new five-year deal from Faustino Andrew in the attacking midfield who looks very, very promising, who has just committed his long-term future to Chelsea Football Club. And I think we can expect to see this youngster play in the Chelsea first team, maybe even this season and going on into next season. And also, with the resumption of football, Chelsea are back into the race for the top four, as well as the FA Cup. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the odds the bookmakers are giving Chelsea for both top four and to win the FA Cup. So I'm gonna leave out the Champions League for the moment. I'm not saying a miracle can't happen away in Munich when that eventually happens, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna talk about the top four race and the FA Cup. And generally, it's all positive stuff, so strap yourselves in for what hopefully is an enjoyable video. I hope you like it, and if you like daily updates on Chelsea Football Club, I would urge you guys to subscribe to this channel, Football Therapy. Hit that bell notifications icon if you do indeed decide to subscribe, and if you wanna help me out even more so, please do drop a like on this video. All right. Let's get into it. Before we talk about Chelsea's prospects in the top four race and indeed the FA Cup, which is actually incredibly exciting, let's talk about this breaking news regarding Tino Andrin. Faustino Andrin is an 18-year-old attacking midfielder hailing from the Chelsea Academy. He is incredibly highly rated by Chelsea Football Club. Loads of teams around world football were actually looking at this player, but Chelsea managed to convince him to pen a new five-year deal and extension, a long-term commitment to Chelsea Football Club, Frank Lampard, Jody Morris, the whole exciting project because they've convinced him he can play a vital part for Chelsea's future and indeed Frank Lampard's project. Generally Tino Andrin likes to play through the middle kind of as a cam but I guess you can play a little bit as an inside forward. He's done a little bit for the youth teams. He's not like your average or quintessential number 10 in the sense of how he's built. He's not small and nimble. He has a big strong frame. He's fast. In many ways people have compared him to Ruben Loftus-Cheek but Ruben Loftus-Cheek plays better driving from deep deep often occupying that left centre mid role, combining and just carrying the ball and battering people up. Now, Tino is big and strong, and although he could probably do that too, he's very, very technical with his feet and can play in tight spaces and between the lines as an effective number 10. Already made his debut for Chelsea's first team, and he's played and come on in the Carabao Cup. I remember watching him play against Grimsby. I was very impressed, even though he and Matson only came on for a limited amount of time. He looks like a very impressive footballer. Now I don't want to bang on too much about his frame but he does look like he's built for English football and would be able to deal with the demands of the Premier League and not only could he hold the ball up well like I say play between the lines well but he can also score goals. He's done that throughout youth level and when he came on against Everton in the 4-0 win when Billy Gilmore who was having an excellent game that day played in Tino obviously he missed in the post-match interview when Billy Gilmore was talking to, I believe, Chelsea TV, he says, well, Tino doesn't miss, generally implying whenever you give him the ball, he will put it in the back of the net. The club rate him incredibly highly, and this is a very massive piece of positive news that he's committed his long-term future to Chelsea Football Club. Although Frank Lampard has given him minutes in a cup, domestic cup, as well as the Premier League, I imagine we'll see more of him even in this season. Of course, with the resumption of football, fatigue's going to be a problem, and the Premier League has been granted five substitutions. This gives Tino Andrew a 12% better chance, I believe, I saw online somewhere, I must admit, of playing. And of course, if Frank Lampard and Jody Morris believe in him so much, we may even see him this season. Regardless, I think he's going to be a big part of Chelsea Football Club moving forward. And like I said, I want to reiterate, he does offer something completely different different as a cam player. Although he's big, strong and fast, his feet are very much twinkle toes and he's a technical player. I think he could be a massive bonus for Chelsea. If Chelsea are playing with a conventional number 10 with Ziyech on the right, Werner on the left, Tammy up front, Mason Mount has looked better occupying a sort of left centre mid role of late. He could be an excellent number 10. I know he's still young but 
Age doesn't seem to be a problem for Frank Lampard. So, sign sealed delivered, pen on paper, the other clubs can now go away, his long term future is linked with Chelsea. I think we can expect to stop seeing number 10s being linked. I know people speak of Kai Havertz, but Kai Havertz is not necessarily a dedicated number 10, he's a versatile player. We may still see a superstar signing like the likes of Kai Havertz, or maybe even Jaden Sanjo one day, who both can play a bit more wide. And I can't, you know, I don't want to say Tino can't play wide because he probably can. We'll see what happens, but good news, let's move on. All right, so with the resumption of football, Chelsea are going to rejoin the Premier League for the top four race. Wait, hold on. Chelsea are going to rejoin the race for top four in the Premier League. I think that makes more sense. So they were in good form, Chelsea, when football stopped, right? Things were going well, you know, beat Liverpool 2-0, beat Everton 4-0. But things were going well for Manchester United as well. And United fans are all convinced that that top four space was going to be theirs. I'm confident, but I'm not insanely confident. I think it's going to be a difficult task. But I was interested in seeing what the bookmakers have said about Chelsea's top four chances. And of course, you don't get odds for Liverpool and Manchester City because they're both, they're just in the top four now. Leicester actually seemed to be a bit of a given at one to six. Certainly that's what most bookmakers are giving them. Pretty much saying, yes, they're in top four. So really, as things stand, fourth and fifth offer Champions League football, but it's not 100% certain because the Court of Arbitration of Sport Appeal for Manchester City started today. We don't know what's gonna happen. So we have to assume just for the moment that it's the one spot fourth place is going to offer Champions League football. And as things stand, Chelsea are pretty still favourites to secure that at 8 to 13, which is generally smart money, but Man United are just behind them at 7 to 4. Of course, Chelsea are still pretty massive favourites for that, but Man United returning with Paul Pogba, Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, probably more you know injured returning players I think McTominay as well was a massive player for them I don't know if he's coming back yet but they will still be a massive threat but if you were a betting man you'd go put money on Chelsea to finish in the top four hell with Tino Andrin coming off the bench now who knows what can happen so of course Chelsea play Aston Villa the first game back and I will do a match preview for that game and review and that's going to be exciting looking at the opposition and talking about football again man that is going to be huge so generally we should all feel comfortable with the Premier League, but not too comfortable because you end up with egg on your face. But let's talk about the FA Cup. This will be a competition that Frank Lampard genuinely will go all out for, I think. Obviously, Champions of Europe, Liverpool have been eliminated by the hands of Chelsea Football Club and most notably Billy Goatmore dismantling Fabinho. So that leaves the favourites to win the competition as Manchester City, the current champions of England and they're coming in at 8-11 to 11, which is pretty heavy favourites. Interestingly, second favourite and over Chelsea Football Club is Manchester United. Now, I think it's only over Chelsea Football Club because Solskjaer has beaten Frank Lampard three times this season across different competitions. So with that, they'll probably think Manchester United have Chelsea beat. They've got the, some sort of juju over them. That's why they're favourites over Chelsea. Chelsea are joint third favourites as things stand with Leicester at eight to one. So United seven to one, Chelsea and Leicester eight to one. If Chelsea perhaps didn't lose three times to Solskjaer, they'd probably be second favourites, I'd imagine, after eliminating Liverpool in the FA Cup. So, Chelsea are in with a shout. It really depends how Manchester City come back after the break with this whole UEFA investigation appeal thing going. Maybe that gets inside their heads. Kevin De Bruyne thinks, oh God, the appeal's not going to come through. I'm going to have to change club. If all that kind of stuff unsettles them, who knows, maybe they'll underperform in the cup. But Frank Lampard, he'll probably think, this is a chance for me to get some silverware in my first season. Chelsea joint third favourites, not too bad at this stage. Not really much to lose, low expectations, so it should be exciting. Chelsea play Leicester away soon. What a game that's going to be. And of course, here on Football Therapy, I will do a match preview and review of said game. So incredibly exciting scenes, loads of positive stuff happening around Chelsea Football Club at the moment, which is nice to see. It's a pleasant... Not surprised, but a pleasant feeling for me to be reporting on positive stuff here on Football Therapy as a die-hard Chelsea fan. I hope you guys are enjoying the content. If you are, please do drop a like on this video. Give me all your comments down in the comment section below. I'm always down there reading them. 
uh, commenting back and all that kind of gear. I love, it. I love talking to you guys down in the comment section below. So do go comment. Um, that's it from me, you guys. Enjoy the football that is happening soon, and I will see you later. Way so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, bitch